Hi, this is Alan Cho. Now I'm going to cover more on the main loop. At the beginning of each main loop call, the emitter creates, a, a, creates some new particles and this emitter event, particles added, is dispatched, which will trigger its renderer's particles added method. And in the case of a display object renderer, uh, it adds the particles, uh, newly created particles corresponding display objects to the renderer's target container's display list. Next, dead particles are moved from the emitter, and this uh, and the emitter dispatches this particles removed event, which would trigger the particles removed method defined in the renderer class. And for the case of a display object renderer, it removes the dead particles uh, corresponding display objects from the target container's display list. And at the end of each main loop uh, iteration, uh, this stepped emitter event is dispatched by the emitter and this will trigger the render uh, render method defined in the renderer for the display object renderer uh, it dumps the data in the particles in the particle list to the uh, to their corresponding display objects uh, it's like copying the numeric data for position and rotation to the display objects and how does the renderer know which particle objects are involved in this event? Uh, it is the particles property defined in the emitter event. It's an array. Uh, it's a reference to an array of particles associated with this uh, with a single event. Now let's look at the initializer priority. Uh, no matter in what order you add your initializer to a renderer they will be sorted according to this priority property which is a integer value. Initializers with higher priority will be used to initialize particles first. And same as initializers, action objects has this uh, also has this priority property defined. So uh, same as the initializers, no matter in what order actions are added to the emitter, they are used to update particle properties according to their priority. Higher actions are used first. And it, in addition to the priority uh, priority property, you can notice that there is also a mask property defined. I'll cover this later. In the action class, there are three methods for updating particle properties. Uh, the update method uh, is, used, is used mainly for updating particle properties. And the pre-update is for uh, setting up resources for the update method and post update is for cleaning up or releasing resources after the updates. Pre-update and post update uh, are invoked at the beginning and at the end of the of the main loop uh, iteration respectively and the update method is uh, called e uh, is called once for each particle. Alright now let's look at some simple code for uh, for some action I just randomly uh, made up. All right. So this pre-update method here grabs a vec2d object from the vec2d pool and assigns the reference to a vec uh, to a, a variable called vec. And in the update method, I'm going to use this vec object to rotate the particle's velocity's direction by a random amount ranging from 0 to 10. And here I'm, I, I use the Vec2D's rotate this method to calculate the rotated result and dump back the result to the particles, particle object's velocity. After all the particles are updated, this post-update method uh, releases, uh, releases the resource by giving back the Vec2D object to the Vec2D pool. Uh, it uh, it passes this vec per, uh, per, uh, variable as a parameter to the recycle method to to put the vec to the object back to the object pool, and then I assign a null value to the vec variable to release the reference. Okay, so now I'm going to cover the particle mask. Uh, in the particle class and the action class, they all define the Value, uh, define a property called mask, which is an integer property, and this is for controlling 
which particles can be uh, updated by which class. Uh, I mean, which particles can be updated by which action objects. If the bitwise n value of a particle and an action is non-zero, this particle will be updated by the action object. Otherwise, if uh, if their mask uh, their masks one bit uh, completely are completely uh, are completely non-overlapping, which means having a bitwise n value of zero, this action would simply skip the particle and uh, to, and begin to check the next particle's mask value. Now let's look at an example. Uh, all these mask values are expressed in binary format. Now, if we have an action of a uh, with a mask of uh, seven, and this is a binary representation of seven, and now I have a particle object with a mask of one. The first one bit overlaps, so their bitwise n value is non-zero. So this particle object would be updated by this action. And for this second object, uh, for this second particle, its mask is six, uh, which has two overlap one bits. So it will also be updated by the action. For this action, which has a mask of twenty, uh, the bitwise n value with the action's mask is zero. So this particle will not be updated by the action. So the action would look at the next particle. And the next particle has a mask of zero, which essentially means this particle will not be updated by any action object. So how do we uh, set up a particle's mask value? By default, a particle's mask value is one. To set this value to another integer value, we use the mask initializer. This code snippet here adds a mask initializer object to the emitter. This initializer will uh, will set the uh, set newly created particles mask to the value equal to the bitwise or of four and one, uh, which essentially in binary format uh, are two one bits in the first and the third bit third place. All right, so this is the end of this video.